Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for another Northeast Ohio edition of Crime Stoppers Case Files. I'm Bob France. There are over 1,400 Crime Stoppers organizations operating around the world. These organizations empower citizens like you to become directly and anonymously involved in fighting crime in our communities. We see the positive impact of this every day in Northeast Ohio as Crime Stoppers has become an important law enforcement tool, a proactive approach to removing dangerous criminals from the streets and making them safer for everyone. Each week on this television program, we'll share facts with you from unsolved cases, and you'll have the opportunity to submit information that may help investigators, possibly earning yourself a cash reward without ever having to give your name. Let's get to work. On Thanksgiving Day 2009, Musa Salty was working at his Little Eagle Market on East 93rd Street when several thieves entered the store, one with a gun. When it was all over, Musa lay dying on the floor. Here's the story of one of Cleveland's most tragic unsolved homicides. My brother had four kids. He was a family man. His family came first. His job came second. He would help anybody. He was a very generous guy. He was pure. He was very pure. He was open-hearted. He wanted to help everybody. Everybody he knew he helped. He loaned people money. He gave them credit. All you had to do was ask him. My brother would give it to you. Mr. Salty was a very caring person. Uh, he helped the people in the neighborhood. Everyone liked him. We heard nothing bad about this man. Upon speaking with one female where we were on the scene, she stated that someone in her family had passed and Mr. Salty donated money to uh, cover the, the funeral for their loved one. And I thought that was very admirable. He was such a good man. He was such a good, I mean, you can go to him. You know, you can go visit him. and. He would, he would always tell me, are you sure you don't need nothing? Are you sure you're okay? Everything's fine? I was like, all the, every time he asked me, he, I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Uncle, don't worry. He goes, is your, is your job okay? Uh, I was like, yeah, I'm, everything's good. You know, no worries about me, you know? The same day, young, a young customer, she told my brother she was just having a bad Thanksgiving. He went in his pocket and gave her $100 just to help her out, just to make people feel good. The strength that he had in his life because he was so pure, he made everybody feel secure because he was around. Everybody felt safe. That was the beauty, the most beautiful part about my uncle. When he was around, the rest of the family, as big as we are, everybody felt safe, like nothing was gonna happen wrong to us. the game and Musa was reading the newspaper his initial thing was when he looked up and he seen the gun he attacked you know he tried to protect all of us in the store that's the type of person Musa is I was supposed to call my brother about 3 30 three minutes before the shooting happened and I never got a chance to call him about 3 47 I get a call from my wife crying saying to call you call your brother store something something happened I got the call around 4.05 uh, from my younger brother because uh, he, he went to the scene and he said that uh, they killed him. 
I was like, what do you mean? They killed him. He was like, they, they killed him. On uh, November 26, 2009, which was uh, Thanksgiving Day, about 3.30 p.m. at the location of 3111 East 93rd Street, which is 93rd and Dickens Avenue, there's a uh, deli called Little Eagle Supermarket. From the store surveillance video, we show these three males running around the building and entering the store and also after the shooting has uh, occurred, exiting the store. All three males are dressed in dark clothing with uh, ski masks on. The male with the gun approached our victim, Musa Salty, with the gun stuck in his face. And there was a, a struggle. The shots rang out and our victim fell to the floor. The three males then uh, escaped from the store. If you see the surveillance, as much as I watched it over and over again, when the gun was put to my brother's chest, they didn't give him a chance. His reaction was to jump on him and protect everybody that was in harm's way because there was about 10 people in the store at that time. They left the store without getting any money or anything. They left empty-handed. I got in my car went to Metro, I got word that he went to Metro. And it was a scene that I, I hope that a family never, ever, ever has to go through in their life. Our victim was shot three times. He died there a short time later, a gunshot wound to the chest. When they pulled that trigger, a thunder went across our family because it rippled so hard, we don't even know how to live our lives anymore. Crime Stoppers is an international organization dedicated to bringing resolution to unsolved crimes. Members of the public work with police to make the world a safer place. Since 1975, thousands of Crime Stoppers organizations worldwide have helped make over one million arrests. Crime Stoppers acts as your advocate, keeping you anonymous and ensuring that your information gets to the right law enforcement agency. To leave a tip, log on to www.crimestoppers1.com. I mean, I love him more than I love my own brothers, you know? Store partner Gus Malky witnessed his friend's murder on Thanksgiving, and so did the store's surveillance cameras. These three men wearing hockey masks rushed into the store, apparently to rob it. Malky says the store has eight surveillance cameras, and one of the cameras inside this store recorded the struggle and shooting which took less than 12 seconds. As the suspects fled, it's clear from the surveillance images that one is carrying a gun. Musa Salta spent much of his working life in his convenience store on Cleveland's east side, a tough neighborhood where Salty's kindness stood out and is remembered by customers who built a memorial and wrote messages like this one, which reads, you were a good man. There was at least 120 people in front of that hospital just crying and trying to understand what happened? There's no words that can express how I'm feeling. No words can express how my mom is feeling, how his wife is feeling, how his kids are feeling. His kids ask about him every day. They want to go see their dad. You can't replace somebody. You can't replace somebody. I don't know how they call themselves people that did this kind of crime because they took a gem. I'm talking about, if you look at a diamond, how clean it is, they took the purest thing in our family. It just, his life was cut too short. He's only 34 years old. He had a lot of dreams. He wanted to build a, a shopping center and he wanted to donate one of the stores for the community. He never got a chance to follow his dream. He never got a chance to see his kids grow up. We've had several leads that we've, we've been following up on but we really need somebody to come forward from the public that's willing to uh, let us know what really happened that day and let us know who these males are. We want everybody to look at their build, look at their clothing, see if anything looks familiar to you and give us a call, please. I'm Detective Michael Smith. My partner is Detective Wally Everett. 
Our office number is 216-623-5464. God bless his wife and God bless his family. And I hope God gives them the strength just to go on every day with their lives just as the way as if my, my uncle was still here. From what I understand, you can stay anonymous. There's reward money available. Please help my family bring these criminals to justice so we can have some peace and closure. These people are gonna kill somebody else. They're gonna destroy families after another family. Somebody just say something. Cause you're looking at four kids. Four kids are gonna have to live the rest of their lives without a father. Right now, two years later, we still don't have justice. Musa was a dedicated family man who was treasured in his east side neighborhood where he operated his business. Police do have suspects in this case, but they need more information to put them away. Now take a look at these photos. If you have any information that could help detectives, we need you to call Crime Stoppers at 216-252-7463. You can remain anonymous and you will be eligible for a cash reward. We'll be right back with more when we return to Crime Stoppers Case Files. August 31st, 2010 was Lamar Lewis's 35th birthday. It was also, tragically, his last day alive. He was shot and killed by someone riding in the car he was in. It happened on Park Avenue on Cleveland's southeast side. Here's the story. I can't really explain him as a baby because he was just a normal, typical get in trouble baby, do little things. He was fun, he was fat, chubby, nice, you know, not a crap baby. He grew up real nice. He went to school, the average typical young man. He liked the basketball, loves football. Lamar and I met by December of 2000. From there on, we had a on and off relationship for 10 years until he passed away. We were to be married May 14th this year. I have two kids. My daughter is 10. She's been around him since she's been born. Mm -mm. I met him when I was pregnant with her, and my son is five. Lamar meant a lot to both of my kids. He was real cool. Like, he'd tell you what I needed to know. He'd tell me something he didn't heard about me. I ain't never knew he knew. Like, and he, he, we didn't talk about no boys. He ain't like it to my boys. He told me he's too young for boys. He nice, he playful, he, he just nice. He did a lot of things for you, no matter what you ask, he did. I mean, everybody loved him. He was, he was, he was a good person, very good person. My kids could go to him about anything. We were a really close little family. Family time was more important than anything. On August 31st, 2010, at approximately 8 o'clock p.m., we received a call at our office to respond to 6000 Park Avenue. We responded to that location, and when we got on scene, we observed the victim, Lamar Lewis, lying beside his 2007 Honda. The victim received six gunshot wounds. Mr. Lewis, on that date, was coming from a party. He and his family were celebrating his birthday at one of the restaurants on Valley View. And the last time they saw him, they were leaving the restaurant. He told everybody goodbye. After the victim left the restaurant, his family didn't know where he was going, but he ended up on Park Avenue. We believe at that time he met up with someone who was seated on the passenger side of the car. When the victim stopped his car to meet this party, whoever it was. His vehicle was pointed eastbound on Park Avenue toward East 71st Street. And whatever conversation transpired, shots rang out. The victim was struck. He attempted to get out of the vehicle. He made a few steps outside of his car where he collapsed on the ground. That's where we found him at. The victim died and was pronounced on the scene. He was transported to the coroner's office. We believe that Whoever was in the car that shot him also robbed him because there was no evidence of any cash found on his person or near the vehicle. 
The day Lamar passed away was his birthday. We were having a little celebration at the bar my family owns. He had called everybody up to celebrate his birthday. He was supposed to come back to the house. I talked to him on the phone, tell him, you know, happy birthday. Uh, the kids was wishing him happy birthday. And he said, I'm on my way back. I'm on my way over there now. And I'm like, OK. And then he didn't come. So we waited, we waited, we waited. So when I walked in, everybody said, well, where's your husband at? And I said, well, I don't know why he's not here. So I kept calling his phone and calling his phone and calling his phone. And about 12 o'clock, I just stopped calling. And I was just like, I'm going to just go over there. My mom called me, and she told me to come home. My mother never tells me to come to her house because me and Lamar live together. So she was just like, come home. And I'm like, well, why? What's going on? So my cousin said, she'll meet me there. And I'm like, well, something bad had to happen. But never in a million years, I thought it was Lamar. I walked in the house and asked her what was wrong with my brother. And she said, it's not your brother. She said, it's Lamar. On August 31st, 2010, 35-year-old Lamar Lewis was killed in his car on Park Avenue. Mr. Lewis, on that date was coming from a party. He and his family were celebrating his birthday. After the victim left the restaurant, he ended up on Park Avenue. We believe at that time he met up with someone who was seated on the passenger side of the car and whatever conversation transpired, shots rang out. The victim was struck. He attempted to get out of the vehicle. He made a few steps outside of his car where he collapsed on the ground. We believe that whoever was in the car that shot him also robbed him because there was no evidence of any cash uh, found on his person or near the vehicle. We believe that the suspects ran eastbound on Park Avenue towards 71st Street. From the video that we re received from one of the businesses in the area, we see young men walking away from the victim's car. These men were black males wearing white t-shirts and blue jeans. We don't know who these gentlemen are. We'd like to, to talk to them to find out what they know about this crime. It's been hard. We think about him all the time. We talk about him all the time. We had a birthday party for him. It was his 36th birthday. Had all his friends. We wore t-shirts with his picture on it. It definitely changed my life a lot. Um, he was my friend most of all. <laughs> when you have a friend, that you lose, it, it tears your heart apart. It's always something that reminds you of Lamar. He's not forgotten. I just miss him. It's like he's still here. I'm daddy's little girl forever. He gone with her forgotten. We miss you, Lamar Lewis. He's been gone a year and three months or so, and nobody has known who did it, how they did it. I just would really would like to know why. If someone knew who did this to him, could you please, please let someone know? Or if you are the person that did it, and you know his family, and you knew him, please just, just let us know so we can have some kind of closure. We have little to go on in this case. We're hoping one of the viewers will give us a call and give us some directions in which we can go to further investigate this crime. If we could, please call the uh, homicide unit I'm Detective Michael Smith. My partner's name is Detective Wally Everett. The phone number is 216-623-5464 or call Crime Stoppers with any information you have. You're looking at cold-blooded killers and they're still walking the streets of Cleveland right now. If you know anything about this case that can bring them in and get them off our streets, protecting our community, we need you to call Crime Stoppers today. You can remain anonymous and you will be eligible for a cash reward. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Crime Stoppers Case Files, where you are empowered to help clean up the streets. Remember, our towns and our neighborhoods are a direct reflection of what we allow them to be. So let's all do our part to make them safe. We'll see you next time for another edition of Crime Stoppers Case Files.